This is section 5.6 covering the definite integrals requiring substitution. So there's a theorem that goes along with this, the substitution rule for definite integrals. So if we follow the SWIE guidelines, the S stands for substitution. So we're going to do the same thing we did before when we did the indefinite integrals with substitution. We're going to choose something to, to use substitution for, and we're going to let U equal that equation. And then you're going to have to compute du. So you're going to have to take the derivative of whatever you let u to be. Additionally, and this is uh, kind of good to know, but our new limits, because we have a definite integral, we have to change the upper and lower limit. So they are also in terms of u. And I'll show you how to do that in a couple minutes. Uh, write, we're going to then write the integral in terms of u, including the new limits of integration. And then we're going to integrate. Uh, so we're going to integrate the uh, lower limit, which is now g at a, at, to the upper limit, which is g of b, of the function at u du. Okay. Once we evaluate the antiderivative in terms of u, we're going to plug in the new limits of integration. Do not back substitute. So this is SWI instead of SWIB. Okay, uh, we do not back substitute because once you change your limits of integration, you don't have to do back substitution. So let's go ahead and look at the first example, evaluate the definite integral, the integration of 0 to 1 of 2x plus 1 cubed dx. Now, if you look at the rule sheet on page 2 of this unit, you're going to see that there is nothing that matches up with this. So there's no rule that takes care of this integration. So we know we have to use substitution. So I'm looking inside the parentheses because I have a binomial. I'm going to go ahead and say let's let u equal 2x plus 1. Now the next process is to find the derivative of u. So the derivative of, of 2x plus 1 is just going to be 2x dx. So if I look at that, uh, remember, I have to make that look like the leftovers. The leftover in this case is just the dx, okay? So how do I do that? I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 half. So if I multiply this left-hand side by 1 half, I have to multiply the right-hand side by 1 half as well. And when I do that, the 1 half and the 2 take care of each other. So I get 1 half du equals x dx. Uh, now that I have everything set up, I have one more step with this substitution uh, step. I have to change the upper and lower limits. Very, very, very important. So you have to change the upper and lower limits. Now the upper limit was 1 in the original problem, okay? So I have to change that. Remember, we said u equals 2x plus 1. So I'm going to find that function at 1. So u equals 2 times 1 plus 1. And when I do that, I get u equals 3. This is my new upper limit. Very important, okay? All right, so I have my new upper limit. Now let's look at the lower limit. So the lower limit in the original problem was 0. So now I have to find that in terms of u. So I use a formula 2x plus 1. So u equals 2 times 0 plus 1. And when I do that, I get 1. So u equals 1 is the lower limit. Okay, so once I do that, and this is, like I said, that's very important, change the upper and lower limits at this step, I now um, am ready to rewrite the integration. So I'm on the W step. Just hit that. So I'm going to rewrite this. Now, remember, my upper limit is now 3, and my lower limit is now 1. Okay, my function is u cubed, and then I have to write in the dx um, so now it's one-half du, okay? So let's go ahead and kick the one-half out in front of the integration. And we're going to integrate just like I taught you in class. Um, so let's integrate u cubed du. 
Uh, and if I integrate that, I get u3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1. By the way, I used rule number 3. Okay, so what does that become? Um, I get 1 half times u to the 4th over 4. So this becomes 1 over 8 u to the 4th. Okay, all right, so now that I have my, uh, I, I've integrated, found what it equaled, I am now going to work on the evaluation. Okay, so this was integration um, step. And I'm going to evaluate that from one to three. So remember, for the evaluation, you take F at B minus F at A, okay? So F at B, uh, we're going to do 1 eighth. And then we're going to take, uh, it's going to be u to the 4th, so 3 to the 4th, minus 1 eighth times 1 to the 4th power. Okay, so 3 to the 4th, if you take 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, you get 81, and it's over 8, minus 1 to the 4th is 1, times 1 eighth is 1 eighth. Uh, so I get 80 over 8, which reduces down to 10. Okay, so that's how you do um, u substitution for example number one. So let's move on and look at example number two. Example number two says to evaluate the definite integral. So I have an integration of one to two, uh, two x squared square root of x cubed plus one. Now, once again, I do not have any rule on that second page of this unit that matches up with that. So I have to probably use substitution, so we're going to try it. So I'm going to let the substitution, I think I'm going to go for whatever's underneath the radical. So I'm going to let u equal x cubed plus 1, okay? So my second step for the substitution is take the derivative of that, which is 3x squared. And now I have to make sure that looks like my leftovers. Now, if I rewrite the original, it's 1 to 2. And I, I rewrite this as uh, the square root of x cubed plus 1, and then we have 2x dx. Now, my du does not look like the dx, so I want to make it look like 2x dx. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 thirds. So if I multiply both sides by 2 thirds, I get 2 thirds times... 3x squared dx. The threes will cancel each other out, and I'm left with 2 thirds du equals 2x squared dx. And that checks out, because that's my leftovers. So I'm good, so I'm gonna put a little okay here. Um, so I did a substitution, now I'm ready to rewrite, with the exception of I have to find my upper and lower limits. So before I rewrite this, I gotta find the upper and lower limits in terms of, of u, okay? So let's work on the upper limit. The upper limit was given to us is x equals two. Okay, now remember I wanted to have it in u. So u equals x cubed plus one. So I plug it in, uh, two cubed plus one. Uh, two cubed is eight plus one is nine. And so that's my upper limit, lower limit. Uh, x equals one. So remember, u equals x cubed plus 1. So I have 1 cubed plus 1, and that equals 2. Okay, so now it's time to rewrite. Okay, so when I write this out, it's going to be an integration of my lower limit is now 2. My upper limit is 9. And now I'm going to write this as u to the 1 half power. And then I have to multiply that by 2 thirds du. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is kick out the two-thirds. Let's put that out front. And I'm just going to integrate uh, u to the one-half du, okay? And then we'll worry about the limits in a minute. So if I integrate that, I'm going to use rule three, which hopefully you guys know what rule three is now. So I'm going to take u, u to the one-half plus one over one-half plus one times two-thirds. Okay, so I get uh, two-thirds times uh, one-half plus one is three-halves over three-halves, okay? 
So what's going to happen is the 3 halves is going to flip upside down. So I'm going to get 2 thirds times 2 thirds times u to the 3 halves. Okay, so that's going to give me uh, 4 over 9 u to the 3 halves power. Now I have to evaluate that from 2 to 9. So my last step is to uh, evaluate. Um, so this is f at b minus f at a. Okay, so 4 ninths, uh, u is now 9 uh, to the 3 halves power minus 4 ninths, 2 to the 2 or to the 3 halves power. Okay, all right, so um, let's deal with this 4 ninths times the square root of 9 cubed. The square root of 9 is 3, and 3 cubed is 27. Okay, so we're going to take uh, 27 times 4, which is 28, over 9. Okay? Okay, correction. Uh, we did the square root of 9, which was 3, and 3 uh, to the third power is 27 times 4 is 109 over 9 minus 8 radical 2 over 9. And I got 8 radical 2 over 9 because if you take the square root of 2 and then you cube that, you get 2 radical 2 times 4 ninths will give me 8 radical 2 over 9. So since I have a common denominator, all I have to do is uh, basically subtract across the numerator. Um, and here's your answer. So uh, you can plug that into your calculator, make it a decimal if you so choose. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at example number three. Example three says evaluate the, the uh, definite integral, and it's going from zero to e, and I have one over two x plus e dx. So once again, I don't have any rule that matches up with that. So I know I have to use substitution. So let's do that first, and let's let u equal... Um, how about 2x plus e? Let's try making the denominator equal u. So the next thing I'm going to do is take the derivative of that. And so the derivative of 2x is 2. And remember that e is constant. So the derivative of a constant is 0. Okay, so that doesn't match up my leftovers. My leftovers is just dx. So what I'm going to have to do is multiply both sides by 1 half. And when I multiply both sides by 1 half, I get 1 half du equals dx. And now um, I'm good to go. Uh, the, the other thing I have to do in the substitution is i got to change my upper and lower limits. So upper and lower limits need to be changed. So I had x equals e for the upper limit. Um, so if I plug that in, u equals 2 times e plus e, uh, u equals 3e. That's the upper limit. Okay, lower limit. Uh, the lower limit, uh, x originally equaled 0. So I plug that into my equation. So u equals 2 times 0 plus e. So the lower limit is uh, e. So now the next step I need to do is to rewrite this. So I have the integration, lower limit we just found to be e, and the upper limit we found to be 3e. And I have 1 over u times 1 half du. So let's go ahead and kick out the 1 half. And we have e to 3e, uh, 1 over u du. Okay. I can once again rewrite this to make this a little bit easier because I do have a rule that says that u to the negative 1 du is equal to ln of u, okay? Um, so what this, this is going to be is going to be 1 half times ln of u. Okay. So my next step is to evaluate it. Uh, so, you know, we already integrated here. Um, we're going to evaluate over the upper, the new upper and lower limits. So upper limit, remember, was 3e, lower limit was e. Um, so we're going to plug into that formula. 
So I'm going to do f at b minus f at a. And by the way, I'm on the evaluation step. So f at b is 1 half ln at 3e. Uh, minus one half ln at e. Okay, and now I have to evaluate this. Uh, so if I evaluate it, uh, ln at e is going to equal one. So we know that's going to be one half. And then this up here is one half ln of three e minus one half. So what we have to do is stick this in the calculator. And when we do, we're going to find out we're going to get 0 0.55 as my answer. Okay, so that's example three. And I'm going to end this, this uh, video. We're going to have a second part of the video that covers that last page of the section.